In this section, we're going to learn some project basics and generally get more familiar with using the interface and tools. Here I have a project open, so let's have a look at it. The tracks that are in the project are displayed in the track view pane and there are associated buses in the bus pane. Remember, we can show that by clicking on the show hide bus pane icon. To the right are the audio clips that contain the audio data. And as you can see, they can be full length for a project or multiple short clips. Clips can overlap each other and either be displayed as a single track where they're stacked on top of each other or expanded into take lanes. We'll be looking at take lanes in more detail later. Let's have a look at controlling how the project plays back tracks and some of the tools available to us. Remember, we can hide and show any of the currently visible view elements. So let's clean the interface up for now by using the keyboard shortcuts of I, D and B. We'll leave the control bar open for now. For most of this and other videos, I'm going to be working with the Smart tool. That's selected by default. And remember, you can check that from the Tools module in the control bar or from the HUD. The HUD is accessed by pressing T or clicking the middle mouse button. It will appear at the cursor position. The basis of the HUD is the Tools module with access to the same tools and the draw resolution. In addition, the edit filter can be changed from here. The edit filter isolates the type of data we work with in the track view and prevents accidental editing of other data, such as moving a clip while trying to edit an envelope. The exact content of the edit filter varies depending on the track type and each track, bus and lane has its own independent filter. We'll look in more detail at the edit filter later. There are several tools available, but as a smart tool covers most of the functions needed, we'll only look at the other tools as they are required. The smart tool adapts its functions to the most commonly used depending on which view has focus and with which objects it's being used. Many objects such as clips and notes have hotspots or hit zones, which means the actions will vary depending on which hotspot the cursor is over. I would always say whenever I change to or use a different tool. We looked at the transport module in detail earlier, where we can control playback using CD style controls. So let's look at an alternative method and start playback by pressing the keyboard spacebar. As you can see, once playback starts, the now time advances, which will continue to do until one of three things happens. We press stop, it reaches the end of a project, or it reaches a loop point. We press the spacebar again to stop playback. Let's take a look at the now time. The now time is always the current point in a project and its current position is displayed by the now time marker which is shown as a solid line that extends the depth of the view. The head of the now time remains where the now time was last at rest and stays there until playback stops at which point the now time marker either returns to it or the head moves to the now time marker depending on your settings which we'll cover shortly. The head of the now time indicates its current state. It's either paused playing or possibly recording. There are also now time numeric indicators at the top left of the track view and in the transport module. The time format can be changed by clicking on the display to cycle the options or right clicking and selecting one and it's possible to use different formats in each view. We can also display a large view of the now time using the big time view. Select that from the main views menu or press Alt plus Shift plus three. This might come in useful if you need to display the now time for musicians that are a long way from the monitors. The view can be resized and the font size and color is configurable by right clicking within the big view. Each project has a tempo map or grid, which is indicated by the measure beat and ticks time ruler. It can range from being the same set tempo throughout the project, or it can be a constantly changing tempo with all the possibilities in between. Notes, beats and other elements such as delay timing can be aligned to it. MIDI clips follow it, as can audio groove clips if looping is enabled. We can specify the tempo or tempos and then record to that by following a metronome or drum beat. Or it's possible to extract a tempo map from audio or MIDI that wasn't recorded to a metronome or other timing lock. 
We'll look at how to do that later. The tempo grid doesn't have to be used, but it is useful to get the best out of Sona's editing tools, syncing delays, correcting timing problems, and many other uses, all of which will be looked at later. Don't confuse the tempo map with the snap grid, which we'll look at in more detail shortly. Although the snap grid can and usually does fit within the tempo map, they are two different things. The now times position is always relative to the time ruler that we've already mentioned. The time ruler is visible along the top of the project and like the now time can be displayed in four different formats. Measures, beats and ticks, samples, SMPT timecode or milliseconds. We can display as many of these formats at the same time as we wish by adding or removing rulers using the icon to the right of the ruler. There must always be one time ruler present though. We can control the way the now time reacts when we press stop or what happens when it reaches the end of a project. It can be configured to stop and stay where it is or automatically rewind to its last stop position marker. This is the position where playback started from. This position marker is automatically updated every time playback stops and as already mentioned is shown as a green play icon marker in the time ruler. To change how the now time behaves when stop is pressed, open the track view and menu options and check or uncheck on stop rewind to now marker. Whichever method you set, the alternative can be used by pressing control and spacebar. This is how it works for the rewind option off. The now time updates to the stop position. This is the alternative and notice that when I stop playback, the now time rewinds to the position it was in when I start playback. We'll reopen the options menu and look at the set now time with full restart. This option may be helpful if you're experiencing sync issues when changing the now time during playback, especially when working with video. Conversely, if you experience pauses changing the now time position during playback, uncheck this option if syncing isn't an issue. There's also an option here to change what happens when the now time reaches the end of a project. Stop at project end, if checked, stops playback. But if unchecked, playback will continue until you press stop. Unchecking this will also allow playback of an empty project, which may be helpful to you for rehearsal or playing to a metronome. We can set the now time in various ways. Left clicking into the time ruler will set the now time to that point, but we can also set options to allow us to set the now time by left or right clicking anywhere in the clips pane background. These options are found in the track view options menu under click behavior. Also in this submenu is an option to lock the scroll by left clicking. This may be helpful if you want to edit something while the project is playing back and don't want the project to scroll. With this option set, as soon as you select an object, scrolling will stop, allowing you to edit it without worrying about the object moving out of view. Left clicking again in the clip pane background will clear the scroll lock. Pressing the scroll lock key on the keyboard will also lock scrolling, this is the first thing to check if your project stops scrolling unexpectedly. Also worth a mention is a CPU resource saving feature that reduces screen updates and appears to make the scroll movement jerky. That is accessed by pressing the pause break key and both can be activated by mistake, leaving you to wonder why scrolling is behaving strangely or not working at all. You see it in action there. There are several keyboard shortcuts for now time control. Move it to the start of a project by pressing Ctrl plus home. We'll go to the end by pressing Ctrl plus end. To move forward or backward a measure at a time, press Ctrl page up to go backwards a measure or Ctrl page down to go forward. Pressing G opens up the go to dialog where we can enter a time in measure beat and ticks format. It's not necessary to enter all of the information. For example, entering eight space three, and we jump to measure eight beat three. 
Before we look at time selection in depth, we'll take a look at the snap grid as it's closely linked with time selection. The snap grid makes it easier to select time periods, move, draw or arrange objects to specific time points, known as snap points. It's a virtual grid that you control the resolution of. A snap module is where we can set the two completely independent global snap settings. They are known as the primary and an alternate setting. Although once permanently swapped, the alternate becomes the primary and vice versa. They're both set by choosing the settings you want to use. The primary is set without the use of a modifier and the alternate is set in the same way but while holding the N key down. The two snap settings can then be switched between either on a temporary basis by holding down the N key or swapped permanently by pressing Ctrl Shift plus N. Let's look at setting it up. The first button turns snap on or off, while the second changes modes. There are two different modes, snap to and snap by, and this is a switch that sets that mode. Snap to is arguably the more useful mode of the two, and regardless of where you click or drag the clip, event or cursor, it will be snapped to the nearest snap point that correlates to this snap resolution. The other mode, Snap By, is helpful if you need to move a clip or other event to the same relative place elsewhere within the project. For example, if I turn Snap Off, so that I can move this clip to an arbitrary start point. When I turn Snap On, with a setting of Snap By at one measure, when I drag the clip, it moves by periods of exactly a measure. The landmark icon turns snap to landmarks on or off. Turning this option on with no landmarks set will automatically open the preferences dialog to prompt you for settings. These are normally accessed from preferences, but quick access is always available by right clicking the snap on off button. Check as many of these as you require and they will each generate their own snap points for events to snap to. It's also possible to set how strong the snap is and that's controlled by the snap intensity settings. If it's set at a low strength, the pull to the snap point is weak and it's possible to set objects between snap points. On its highest setting of extreme, the pull is very high and it's almost impossible to set anything anywhere other than at a snap point. There's an area here to try the settings out. The snap to nearest audio zero crossing will ensure that the snap will align with an audio zero crossing point if there is one. This can help to eliminate pops or other noises when editing audio, such as splitting clips for example. To set the snap, click and hold the drop down and select the required resolution. There are musical time choices as well as absolute choices of ticks, samples, frames and seconds. Choosing any of the absolute choices We'll change the drop down to a text entry box where you can set the desired number of units. Press enter or escape once you've finished entering your choice. The musical values will also have a modifier. This can be for triplets or for a dotted value. It's also possible to turn on the smart grid. In this mode, the grid resolution will change dynamically with the horizontal zoom level. The current snap will be displayed in the snap module and zoomed out the snap is set to measure and the closer you zoom in, the finer the snap resolution becomes. To disable the smart grid, simply uncheck it in the drop down box. You can then set a manual resolution again. The snap on off button reflects whether the smart grid is enabled or not. I have it enabled in my alternate settings. Releasing the N key switches back to my main settings. Any combinations possible. One grid can be on, one grid can be off, one grid can have a smart grid and the other set to quarter beats for example. In addition to both of these settings, the PRV can also have its own settings and we'll look at setting that up later.